Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Karma Cards. We've got a lot going on energetically. We're approaching a big blue super full moon in Aquarius happening on Monday, August 19th. That is coming up as well as this switchover happening in our Mercury retrograde. So we're sw switching from Mercury retrograding in the sign of Virgo, which is more about getting, get, going over the details of your communications and getting really specific or looking at the specifics of what you're trying to express or communicate. Now we're switching into Leo. So with Mercury retrograding in the sign of Leo, this has to do with our, our need to be an authority is really what's being looked at where we feel like we need to be an authority or seen as an authority or seen as important and become aware of where in those areas our communications with others become sort of one-sided it's a one-way conversation and so this would be like an example would be a parent-child relationship where you're the parent and the child is not responding to you in a way that sort of acknowledges your authority and sort of kind of setting the law and it being a one-sided conversation no one else gets to put in a word edgewise and it's that kind of really harsh parameters that's just an example of what it can look like but we do this in some areas of our life where we feel that we need to be seen as important or as an authority and we're being asked to review that what does it look like when i need to be seen as the shiz in a certain area of life um and how am i communicating with other people and it, am i open and able to shift that communication can i find that i actually find my power in staying grounded in myself and allowing other people to express their uh, knowledge, their points of view in an area that I may hold expertise or a lot of knowledge. Am I open to receiving information or knowledge from other people in that area or do I tend to close down and close off? And of course, if we're seeking wisdom, we're always looking to keep the mind open. It doesn't have to be so open that you don't have a sense of yourself or a sense of the truth or a sense of an opinion. It just means that you're not worried about you, you don't have a, a lack mentality around it you're not uh, feeling threatened by other people also holding knowledge information uh, or awareness in this area as well so that's what's being kind of put under the microscope right now this might actually affect people in business the most so it might affect your business your career where you're holding authority uh, these are the areas that we're going to be looking at and paying attention to over the next half of uh, I was almost at February the next half of August before I forget I have a few awesome events coming up on Monday April 19th that I wanted to let you know about there will be links in the description below the first is on the insight timer app it is a free live event where you will be live with me and we're going to be doing a spiritual block removal process with the full moon energy so i'm going to be guiding you in meditation as well as a few processes for releasing blocks that are getting in your way so if you're looking at sort of your soul contract and the things that you want to be done with maybe uh, we're looking at cord cutting that needs to happen or releasing negative energy from our own auric field that sounds like something that really resonates with you that's happening on monday at 12 30 p.m pacific time um, the link is in the description to join it is free all you need is the insight timer app and that is free to download um, so feel free to join me for that and if you want to take it even deeper and go into the actual messages that are coming through with this super blue full moon in aquarius you can always join the spirit circle where we go deeper into the material we sort of really unravel and look at the areas of life that the cosmos is pointing at and showing us how to handle as well as doing meditation. There's the channeling that comes through. I don't know who's going to come through, but there's always something really interesting that comes through in the channeling portion. And of course there's psychic Q and a 
where you can ask me a question and I can give you a reading on what I'm getting for you. If that sounds interesting, there's a link in the description below for you to join us there. And I'd love to see you. All right. So we've had a lot of solar energy as well as these astrological movements that are coming up. We've jumped timelines again. And for those who haven't heard it in the podcast or weren't at my live channeling on Insight Timer on the 888 portal, the uh, Golden Circle Council of Sirius came through and they talked about timeline jumps that are happening in the month of August. We had had one already before the 888 portal. We just had another timeline jump just a few, like two days ago, I believe. I, I want to say it was on the 13th of August. We had a timeline jump, which means there's two more coming within this month. And there's a lot of energy. Things are ramping up. There are events going on in the outside world that are meant to scare you. They are meant to invoke fear for many different agendas. And we don't really need to go into what their agenda is because it's always about control. It's always about maintaining this old structure. And as you know, that has to come apart. But there is new waves of information about events coming, fearful, scary events. And this is where the team wants to talk to you today. I'm going to pull something that came through from that 888 uh, Lionsgate channeling that I did. I want to share with you what they said because it's so potent. It was so on target and I'm so happy they gave us that information. I want to make sure you can hear it. Unfortunately, I cannot download uh, that channeling from the Insight Timer app. You're not allowed to take content off of there and it was live. So it's not recorded in that way. I do want to share with you the main point of the message. And the main point of the message was your greatest tool at this time, your greatest power at this time is love. Sounds simple. It sounds like the stuff we've already always heard, but they broke it down in a way to help you understand. So love, the energy of love, the energy of uh, keeping an open heart, keeping a hold, if you will, of the highest energy available. Love is one of the highest energies available to us. It brings us up to higher timelines. And that's one of the ways that love acts as sort of a, a special tool for us at this time, because these fear frequencies want to take you down to lower timelines. And we need to understand that there are a plethora of timelines playing out. They will all play out, but you will only be conscious of the one that you are the most aligned to. And so love will take you into the higher timelines where better events unfold, where things that are negative end up fizzling out or being defeated quite easily rather than going into a full nightmare situation with a negative control structure that just propagates negative energy. And so they want you to know that love is going to take you up to these higher timelines. Number one, number two, love is the polar opposite to fear. So if they lived on a spectrum, it wouldn't be love and hate. It would be love and fear because we hate what we fear. Fear is the opposing force to love. And the way that the Syrians talked about it, they used color theory, which is something from my own background as an artist. So those artists and designers out there, this will resonate for you. But they were talking about how um, in color theory, you have complementary colors or color opposites. And when they're brought together, they have sort of a neutralizing effect. And so this is the same with love and fear. And they use the colors purple for love and yellow for fear, which makes sense because we often associate the color yellow with fear in our societies and cultures, right? Like yellow bellied or whatever it's called, like turning yellow. This, this color yellow often can represent the energy of fear. And what was interesting about it is whenever you apply purple to the color yellow, it neutralizes it and can completely obscure it, completely eradicate it. So purple, the dominance of purple can come in and neutralize yellow and then absolutely obscure it to the point where it's eradicated. You cannot sense that yellow is there anymore. Whereas when you take yellow and add it to a purple, it will 
tint the purple. It will take some of the vibrancy down and sort of mute it and muddy it, but you can never fully obscure purple with yellow. Therefore, it's the same with fear. You can hold a strong love by vibration and feel fear and not completely eradicate the love. The fear can tint it, but it can never fully eradicate it. But love can fully eradicate fear. And so what the reason they wanted to share this with us is because you are doing the work. If you're listening to material like this, that's talking about being in your, you know, higher vibration, aligning with love, staying grounded, staying in your sovereignty. If that's the material you're drawn to, you're already focusing on the power of love inside of you. You are already focusing on that oneness with all that is, which is very strong protective energy and you can be aware of the fear matrix the fearful events the fear mongering that's going out there and feel fear but what they want you to know is that love you're holding will never be eradicated by the fear and you can eat easily neutralize the fear you are feeling by adding more love so how do we add more love one of the ways, one of the strongest ways you can add more love is through appreciation and gratitude. When you can find something to appreciate or feel grateful for in a moment of fear, you start neutralizing the fear because the fear is trying to tell you that there is nothing to appreciate in this moment. There is nothing to be grateful for. Our fear is trying to trick us into believing that this is all coming to an end and it's all going away. And we know that scarcity isn't true. There's more than enough. Now, there's a scarcity game, just like there's a fear game. But the reality is that there is more than enough. And our fear does not want us to acknowledge this. So if we have the wherewithal to find gratitude and even appreciation for the moment that we're in, we can easily start eradicating that fear. And that might look like, I'm so grateful that I'm safe in this moment. The reality is I am safe in this moment and I feel appreciation and gratitude for that. Right now, no matter what I just heard, no matter what was just said or what is being implied, I am here, I am alive, I am divinely connected, I'm always protected, I am safe and I am grateful for this moment. And that's the truth. Same thing when you hear upsetting information around money. You can look at the money that is around you that you have and you can acknowledge and appreciate its presence. It's the same with, you know, people you love. People, you know, they're they're trying to fear people and do, oh, a big scary virus is coming. Guess, oh, you better get scared. Get really scared. Let's Let's all freak out and panic and make rash decisions again right? They're going to try and do that. And instead, what you can do is, yeah, I hear that. I do not consent is such a powerful phrase. We'll get into that in a moment. After stating whether you consent or not to whatever program you're being offered, you can then look around, say, I'm grateful for my health. I am in beautiful health right now. And I take great care of myself. In fact, I'm going to do an act right now, an act of love that will show how much I love myself. I'm going to drink some water or I'm going to do some yoga or meditation or something that'll calm my nervous system. I'm going to put my legs up the wall because that is such great. That's such a great way to take care of my nervous system when I get bombarded with scary information is I'm going to reset my nervous system right after that. That's a way I can show love to myself. Look, my children are healthy. My husband, my partner, my family, my extended family, the people I love are healthy. Look, I can still communicate with the people I love, right? I, I can call up a person right now and tell them how much I love and care about them. These are all acts that are acts based in love and they are affirming your life rather than affirming your fear. And when you affirm life, you are using the vibrational energy of love. And that's going to take you, again, into higher frequencies. And again, let's go into the consent portion because this is how the game is played. And we need to be aware of the game in order to beat the game. And yes, some of us are like, I don't want to play the game. I get you. I don't want to play the game, but the game is here and we're in it. So we can try to opt out, um, but we are on planet Earth, right? We're on here, this Earth. 
there's a game afoot. Here's how we can play and play and even that playing field. When we are being presented with fearful information, the hope from our negative opponent is that you will assume it's true and assume you have no choice. And so what they're working with is either acquiesce to their plan or try to shut it out, but don't say anything about it, right? Just either comply, which is their the best version, or ignore, which is also good for them. Why is that? Because if you do nothing about it, then they can call that implied consent. You didn't say yes, but you didn't say no. And one of the best ways you can combat fearful information, even as it comes into your field, is say, I do not consent. I do not consent to a new virus. I do not consent to, you know, the, the stealing of data on a mass level, right? I do not consent to manipulation. I do not consent to the lies. I do not consent to propaganda. I do not consent to whatever it is you want to say. I do not consent is so powerful. Why? Because in order to create something, they need group consciousness on board. They need mass collective consciousness to agree. It's our collective collective consciousness that creates for us. Just like it's our subconscious in us individually, that is the creates. The conscious mind is the the leader, it's the captain, it's the one making the plan. The subconscious mind is going to create the behaviors and the patterns that will lead to creating what you desire. So they are using that, but on a mass scale. And what they need is they either need total compliance, which is impossible to get because no one's ever, a group will never totally comply. But for those that won't comply, they need your ignorance. They need you to be distracted and not paying attention or be dismissive because that can be perceived as implied consent, right? When it comes to stating, I do not consent to blank, what you are doing is you are sending out an energetic frequency that disrupts their frequency. So we're working just with consciousness here. Everything is based off frequency. It's mind over matter, right? So the mind has to start the creation of whatever's coming, whether it's a beautiful experience, a negative experience, whatever it is, the mind has to be the start point and that's where the frequencies meet. And so when they offer a frequency and we don't match and we intentionally say no, we it's like there's a cross that happens and it breaks up the frequency they're sending by adding that opposing force, right? So what had a strong unified energy, as soon as it hits that, as soon as it hits that lack of consent, it starts to break apart. It starts to warp. It's the original intention is now weakened and separated to a degree by the interjecting of an opposing force, an opposing energy, in this case, opposing thought and frequency. So your sovereignty to say, to make a choice on the mental level is very powerful. And it's not really information that they want shared. I mean, they want to make it sound like that's nuts, that's crazy, your mind can't, you know, one person's thought can't disrupt the field, but that is so not true. It's so not true that back in the time, the golden age of Atlantis, this was how they would decide what actions their society would take, is they would have these collective meetings where those who were put in positions of leadership would say, okay, here's the plan. Here's what we'd like to do. It's going to look like A, B, and C. And then they would turn to the public and say, what are your thoughts? Do you agree? And if even one person dissented and did not agree to that plan, they wouldn't do it. And the reason why is they knew at that time that if one person offers dissent, it warps the original intention. It will not come out the way they planned it to. It will get warped in some degree. And so they wouldn't even bother 
enacting a plan unless they got consensus from the group. And so, you know, who knows how many revisions they'd have to go through. I'm sure that they would go to the person who didn't consent and say, what part don't you consent to? And they would make adjustments until the whole group would, you know, agree that this is the plan to move forward. That's how powerful the conscious mind is of even an individual. And you got to look at it like, look at it like ants, right? So ants follow a trail. There's a trail the, of the ant before them and the ant behind them follows that trail. Should one ant, like should a twig fall onto that path and the ant following behind cannot smell the trail of the one who came before him and makes a new path, all the ants behind it start following that path. That's what it looks like when a, there's a disruption in the energy flow, it shifts it and it changes it. Now the path is different. Now the outcome is also different. And we as a collective are constantly being used to help create. And we're in a time where there is more sentient awareness. There's more sovereign awareness in individuals than ever before. And so you bet we are powerful. We already are powerful. But when you are aware of your own power and you know that you can use your thoughts to either encourage or discourage a situation, here's what you're doing for yourself. Yes, you're disrupting that flow and you're changing the outcome. You're also switching a timeline when you do it. These timeline switches are small. It's not going to be like, oh my gosh, suddenly I switch timelines and now they're spaceships, you know, and everybody's like the Jetsons. I mean, some people think of these big jumps. Timeline shifts are incremental, like the ant who has to make a new path. It's like that. When you say, I do not consent to this, you are putting yourself on a slightly different timeline where this thing you don't consent to doesn't really have the power that it could if you did consent, you see? And so our mind, our ability to stand in our power and not be afraid of what's shown to us, just because it's shown to you, it doesn't matter who tells you this thing is happening. Do you agree? And if you don't, you can say no. And if you do, you can say yes, but state it, state it within yourself because that's going to move you to your desired timeline. And with that, let's look at this week's Karma Cards. All right, if you're new to Karma Cards, let me quickly show you how these work. I have three decks here, planets, signs of the zodiac, and the houses of astrology. And I've already asked my team, what's the message for this week? And I have got two sets of answers, a set, a set in red, which are action related, and a set in blue, which are outcome related. And the way that you play is you tune in with that beautiful intuition of yours and feel what is the guidance you need this week? Are you looking for action-related guidance or do you want to see how things resolve over the next seven days? And of course, you can always choose both. And while you are choosing, let me tell you the timing for this reading. This reading is for August 15th through the 21st. And the flavor of this reading, we've got Saturn. <laughs> Saturn is the malefic. Uh, it's the one that slows us down. It's the one that lets us know that Whatever actions we're trying to take right now, probably not going to happen because we have more work to do. We have to review it or there's karma to assess. In the sign of Aquarius, the sign of our new age. So this is about the future. It's about uh, your vision for the future, both personally and collectively, and the higher mind. So tapping into our, the highest levels of our consciousness. In the third house, which is the house of self-expression and communication. So this is really how, this is the, the house that is ruled by Gemini, which is ruled by Mercury. So this is that Mercury energy coming in right here. For those who are choosing action, your spiritual action at this time is to be realistic about your vision by making the right connections. Yeah, again, what I'm hearing is, one that you're waiting for is you. So if you're waiting to see how things turn out, you have to be involved. Again, I'm going back to this idea of a game. One of the ways that you can look at why are we on earth at all? Like why is this 
happening from a spiritual perspective is that it's a simulation and it acts as kind of like a cross between a graduate school and a game at the same time. So it's a gamified learning program and you're learning by doing. You're learning by going through experiences and making choices. And based on the choices that you make, this is what determines if you're ready to graduate to higher levels of learning or not. Do you need to go back and repeat a lesson? Do you need to do the school all over again? Like, where are you at? in terms of your own spiritual progression. And that's what this time period is for. And so when we kind of sit back and hope it gets taken care of, that's not really playing the game. It would be like being in front of a video game, but not wanting to actually engage in the game because you're kind of hoping the game is over when the game doesn't start until you play. And so the, the very nature of like a video game or this game is you're required to play. So even though we're like, oh, I don't want to deal with bowser or <laughs> or whatever negative you know i don't want to fight the bad guy okay but that's part of why you're here not necessarily to fight not necessarily to fight but to engage and so therefore again we're being asked to be realistic about the fact that we we do need to engage and what is the part that we're playing if you're trying to move to a higher timeline, what are you going to need to do to achieve that? Mental action at this time. Be concerned about what is new and different about the idea in question. We are in sort of the boss level of this game now. We're getting very close to our graduation point where, you know, some would call that ascension, right? This ascending to a higher level of consciousness. Well, we're in that sort of final stages and it's like okay from everything you've learned how are you going to apply your previous knowledge to the situation at hand and this is again one of those periods where we might want to check out like things look too scary and i don't really want to engage there's a strategy to it though right there's a strategy to which again like i said before we can use the, the power of face it and say, I don't consent. I'm, I'm changing this right now, using my consciousness to meet the frequency that is being presented to me. And I'm interrupting. <laughs> I'm saying no, right? That's one of the ways we can do it. And then it's like, once I've made a choice about that, then I can be like, this no longer deserves my attention. I'm no longer giving it my attention and energy because where focus goes, energy grows. And I do not wish to grow this anymore. That's a strategy versus I can't look at this. That's not a strategy. That's again, trying not to play the game. And so it's asking us to be, be aware of how we are dealing with the, the new fear, fear mongering that's coming our way because we could repeat the past. We could do something completely different or we can opt out and let's see what happens. But I'm not interested in doing somebody else's plan. I'd like it to be a plan that's focused on the choice I've made around it, if that makes sense. All right, physical action at this time. You must wait before you can use an unconventional way and get things going. We are in a point, a choice point right now. That's where we're at. It's to make a choice about what we're looking at, not necessarily to take action against it. These cards are very much saying there's no action really you can take. It's a consideration, it's a contemplation, and it's a choice point, right? Again, Saturn's connected to karma, and karma is a neutral term. It's just the outcome of your choice, the outcome of your action. If you choose this, you get that. If you choose this other thing, you get this other thing, right? And this is the point. Uh, that we are at right now. So it might feel like I want to do something about it. Like I'd like to opt out or I don't want to play or I'd like to hit pause or whatever it is. No action to be done, only choices to be made internally at this point about whether or not you consent is kind of the feeling I get. Do you consent to what they're showing you or not? And if you're not seeing it yet, don't worry. Soon it's going to be everywhere. But I'm telling you, we're at this, the, again, the precipice right now where things are about to like snowball and the fear ramping up will be very real 
on one level, meaning that they're really trying to get us to be afraid. And yet fear is still a choice. And even if you felt a little fear, you can always neutralize it by adding more love to the situation. All right, now let's look at outcomes for Saturn in Aquarius in the third house of communication. And the spiritual outcome at this time is the maturity that brings genius to experiment with your ideas. Yeah, so this is a growth moment, always a growth moment, right? When we're, when we're at a choice point, it is a growth moment because we can either remain the same or change. We can either run away or face it. You know, there's so many ways that we can grow, but it looks like they're leaning towards, hey, I think you're going to grow in this point and that's going to give you access to new information, to new understanding, right? So again, like in a game, if you get past a certain you know, if we're at the boss level, there's all these mini challenges before you hit the big boss, right? Every time you pass a mini challenge, you get new awareness, new skills are unlocked, you level up in some way, you get more strength as you move forward. And that's the name of the game right now is this understanding that these trying or difficult situations aren't always what they are at face value. Sometimes they're a gift in disguise that you can't see. And when you learn to stand in your sovereignty, and your personal authority more, then new gifts get unlocked within you. Mental outcome at this time, caution regarding the discoveries of short-term thinking and trips. Yeah, they're just saying think longer than the moment in front of you. Like fear happens sort of, being caught off guard happens in a moment. But if you stop and collect yourself first, then you can you can see the long game. You can see where things are going. You can understand that you're in a type of simulation that's responding to you and your choices. Your choices are what's taking you up or down in frequency, right? If they're helping you polarize positive or negative or neutral if you're choosing not to do anything. But a reaction is a short-term type of situation. It's immediate, right? It's like, oh, I'm just like, oh, boo, ah, oh, right? That's a reaction. I'm reacting to it. Whereas <laughs> if you're going for a response, which is the higher self is in charge. Now the soul, you're working from a soul level rather than an ego level. Ego goes into reaction. The soul responds. So <laughs> if your soul were present and responding to someone going, boo, you'd go, why is it you want to scare me? I'm curious, like what, what's the, what's your deal there? <laughs> like that's a response, right? It's, it's considerate. It's taking a moment to sort of assess the situation and gain focus. So it's just letting us know we, we need to be careful in our reactions, right? So the reaction has an emotional, a reaction gets an emotional bump. An emotional bump sends energy to the thing you're reacting to. So if you're reacting, like let's say someone antagonizes you and you get mad and yell at them, who's getting the energy? The, your antagonist, right? Which is why they do it because they get an energy bump from you. So it's asking us to be aware of our reactivity to certain things. This is something that it's, it's easier to say sometimes than to do, but we're being asked in this period to be mindful of it. Even if you caught yourself reacting, you could pull it back and go, take my power back. I take my energy back. I put it back in my body. I'm going to go put my legs up the wall. I'm going to think about this. Why is this making me react so much? I'm going to sit with that until I can understand where I'm coming from. And then when I understand where I'm coming from, now I can choose. I can choose now to respond. And that's going to shift things for us as well, right? Physical outcome at this time, limits imposed resulting from the eccentricity of who and what is around you. This is going to be tricky because if you're aware, when you're listening to this message and you're absorbing it and taking it in, you're like, great, I want to be more responsive than reactive you might find it really difficult to deal with the waves of fear, the fear programming that's coming in if you're around certain people who are just naturally reactive, right? They're not being mindful. They're staying sort of in the ego 
and acting from an unconscious place where just, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, this is so bad. Like, and they want to go into it. That's going to be a bit of a caveat for you to do your work of raising yourself up and out of it. It doesn't mean you can't, it just makes it more difficult when you get people again, you're watching them give energy to something, even though they don't want to, that's, that's not our intention. When we react, we're not really thinking about what we're doing. Are we, we're mindless with it. We're not thinking I'm giving this energy. I'm giving this energy. We're just giving it without thinking about it. And in this period of time, as we're getting served more and more fearful scenarios for us to choose whether we are reacting or responding and you're around people who are very reactive, it's going to feel harder to move into response because you might feel reactive to their reactivity, right? Like, so it can become sort of a chain reaction where it's not really you reacting to the, the incident, but rather you reacting to the person reacting, right? So you can see that chain reaction. All this is saying is like, mm, this is something that might be hard to get other people on board with unless they're working on it themselves too, unless they have that in mind of like, yeah, I don't want to be reactive. Yeah, I'm not giving my power away to any agenda. Yes, I'm staying in my sovereignty and I know I have a frequency that will either add to or disrupt the other frequency being offered. So if they're in that place and they get a little reactive, you'll know that they're recovering because they'll try to work through it. That's different than people who are mindlessly reacting and they're building it up. And you can tell who they are by how they sort of like The image they're showing me is a, a mountain out of a molehill, right? They just keep building this thing up that they're reacting to. It just keeps getting more and more intense for them, more uh, peak energy kind of going into what they're doing. That's a person who's like mindlessly just reacting versus a person who's having a temporary freak out before they collect themselves and bring themselves back to center. There's a, there's a difference in the energy. So Notice it because there's a good chance we're both, you know, we're all going to do it. We're all, we're all going to go into that moment of like, oh my God, oh wait, right, hold on. No, 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 right? We will have moments like that. That's okay. And remember, remember what the Syrian said. It's like, no, your, your love cannot be obscured by fear, only tinted, but just add more love and you'll neutralize that. You will neutralize it back into love. So that's a different energy. People who are escalating in their fear, that's reactivity. Those are the ones who it's going to be hard to do this work around. So do your best to sort of add space between you and them. This doesn't mean you cut them off in any way. It just means like, maybe, maybe we need to talk about something different during this time. Maybe we focus on something else together. Maybe I limit the amount of time that I hang out with this person right now only because they're really building it up. And when they start coming down, or calming down, or they want to change their perspective, then we can move forward. Just notice that and do your best to balance yourself because at this time, again, with the Leo and Mercury retrograde, it's going to be easy to want to be like, tell someone to chill out or tell someone that you're, you're freaking out is freaking me out and trying to control them so you can feel better. That's never going to work. We're never going to be able to do that. Free will is a real thing. We need to understand their side of the street is not yours to clean. It's your side of the street. What you are doing, that's your responsibility. And hopefully what they'll see is, wow, you know, so-and-so is really pulling themselves together. They really seem okay. They really seem grounded and balanced. And they're not in a place of peer, fear. They're in a place of more grounded energy and peace. I would like to be like that. Maybe I should ask them like, what do you, what do you know? Or what are you doing? That's helping you. And that will be how you help them. But first maintaining your own energy field and keeping that clear. That's the priority as always. And with that, I'm sending you so much love. Mwah.